Hello everyone, this is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal, and this is my daughter Gabrielle. And um, today I want to talk about deep tendon reflexes. I want to talk about the technique of doing a deep, deep tendon reflex and why you do it. Okay, so some of the things that are very, very important to know is that when you do reflex testing, you need to understand why you're doing it and at what level you are testing, okay? Um, I keep a reflex hammer in my back pocket on a daily basis because I test just about every single new patient that comes into the clinic and I retest them uh, quite often. Um, it's important that when you use a reflex hammer that the head is heavy and that the head is dense. Uh, sometimes you get these cheap hammers that are a real light styrofoam or a light foamy type material. Um, that does not work very well and this is why. When you are ready to strike the patient, that has to be dense and hard enough to displace the tendon a little bit and cause a stretch reflex. When that stretch reflex occurs in the patella tendon, the, that message is sent to the spinal cord. Spinal cord sends another message back to the quadricep to tighten the muscle up. And it's basically a, a protective mechanism that helps to prevent that quad from being overstretched and damaged. Okay? Same thing happens with other areas. So when you are testing the patella tendon reflex, you need to remember that it's an L3, L4 reflex. Um, L5 doesn't have its own isolated reflex and the Achilles is S1. Um, so remember that when you are doing a reflex test, which level you are working on. Okay, And that just helps to put it all in order for you. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that when you strike the patient on the tendon, you're as perpendicular to the tendon as possible. Okay, and use the appropriate side. So if you're using a bicep tendon, you want to use the sharp tip so that you can get into that area. If you are doing the patella tendon, you want to strike it with a little bit more surface area. Okay, it's important that that reflex hammer swings and bounces back off the tendon. Now, I have a great slow-mo video. I'll attach that link into um, the bottom of, the, uh, of this video and that way you can take a look at it in slow motion and see how well it works. Um, so it's important that the patient is as relaxed as possible. Sometimes you can hold a conversation with them, you can have them pull their hands apart, look up, count to 10 out loud if you need to distract them a little bit better. But it's important that you strike them with a lot of speed, okay? Um, and you can test them five or six times and if you get one good reflex test, that's fine, okay? You, they, they have good reflexes. Oftentimes people don't strike in the right area or with enough force and they don't let the reflex hammer bounce off so you don't get a real good accurate test and I've seen this firsthand with many many people um, and I actually had this tested on me recently and um, they thought I had a neurological disorder because I did not have a good reflex test but they did not strike my patella tendon in the right area so um, again I want to reinforce that the hammer needs to be the hammer head needs to be heavy enough it needs to strike the tendon with enough speed you need to be thinking of the level that is being affected when you are doing this test and um, you will really start to fine-tune your evaluation skills much better. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to see other videos on deep tendon reflex uh, testing on upper and lower extremities, I'll have the links in the, the uh, show notes of this uh, video. And please